So the first question that we have for today is what should someone look for when selecting a coach? It's funny because I just had to select a new coach myself. Um, yeah, Ooh. I had been working with someone for a while and then he got uh, hired. But he, you know, he had a coaching practice on the side and then he got hired as a full-time uh, person at an organization and he really wanted to focus on that. So it, it was time to close. So I've gone through two hiring processes and my own coach. And what I know to do is, uh, um, and I'm, I am the oddest client ever in terms of me being coached, uh, you know, because I, I, I mean, I'm an MCC, I run a coach training program. I must be super intimate. I, I know I'm super intimidating as a client, um, but I know I'm a very good client if I find the right coach. Uh, so I, I go out and uh, I have a couple, I, I, you know, ask a couple different coaching organizations, um, not my own, because I feel like that's a little odd for me to, to hire someone I've trained. Uh, so I, I go, um, uh, I mean, I go to a couple different coaching boards and put it out there and do, you know, do, do my Google searches and things like that. Uh, I am looking for someone who is ICF accredited or ICF, who has our ICF accreditation, at least a PCC. Um, I want someone who I know is, you know, does this, they're professional at it, they've trained, they have the certification, that's, that's there. Um, the second thing I'm looking for is uh, I will um, go out and have three to five people I'll contact and do sample sessions with them. Uh, and that to me is more important than almost anything else. Uh, how, I, how I show up with them, how they show up with me, I feel like that's the key to uh, my, own, my own process. Uh, and I'm very upfront with the coaches I speak with. And I tell them, this is who I am. This is, what I, this, is, this is how I show up as a client. And I like my coaches to uh, basically just ask a question and get out of the way. And uh, I also let them know my pet peeves around coaching as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's an interesting conversation. Uh, but I, I think the key to it is is finding someone who's certified, and then also like, at least trying out three to five coaches. How about you, Ali? How do you find a coach? Um, I actually, my, my first coach was like love at the first sight. So mm -hmm. I'm not hundred percent sure what I looked about her. Um, but I, I agree with you when I am in my first session, when I try to this, uh, do this fit coach client session with my potential clients, I always ask them to search more like to try because normally they, they come to me as referral, for example. So I always ask them to do the research and to look for someone that is accredited or at least has all the tools and preparation to um, help you or the experience to help you. And also, I think it's really important this fit uh, talk. Mm. I don't know if you, you have, you definitely have that when you are choosing a, a coach. I, I can imagine it could be tough for, for me being a coach to you as a client. <laughs> Um, but I always think that you need to get this uh, vibe also and to have a conversation of what you're looking for in a coach, maybe make a list of what you're looking for in a coach or what you're looking to work with a coach and, and to see because there are so many different coaching styles and that's the beauty of coaching too, that you can find someone that actually fits with what you're looking for and what uh, help you need. Um, and also, uh, what your expectations are, right. And, right. and be able to, um, have a clear idea of what my coaching expectations are and what my coaches expectations is. So I do have expectations from, for my own clients. And I, I actually really like to put over the table, all the expectations for both parties. Right. So I, I really think it's besides everything that you already said or plus everything you ever said i think this conversation is so important to just know where we are 
in a coaching relationship. Totally. I have, I have a follow-up too, like thinking about like what, what I'm really looking for in that first thing. There are two things. One is someone who is confident enough in the coaching process to trust the mm -hmm. coaching process. Like if I feel at any point in time, my coach is trying to fix something or trying to, um, or has an idea of which way I should go, or um, like if I feel any kind of uh, assumption that they're making mm -hmm. uh, or problem fixing, that's it, I'm done, like I'm out. Like that's a very clear, okay, like you, you don't like I need someone who's confident enough to trust the process. And the second thing is, uh, I don't want someone who makes an assumption that, uh, like I can't, like the goals I'm after are too big. They need to be brought down. Like they, you know, like the, when a coach says to me, like, Hey, like, let's be more realistic here. I'm out. I'm done. I'm like, no, I didn't grow this being realistic. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a part it's of a it for sure. But I'm out, you know, I mean, if it's like the kind of thing where if I, I say I want to work out seven days a week and they're like, well, that's not realistic. Let's shame for five. I'm out. So it's really interesting to know as a client, like, what are your outs? Like, where are the things that when you're working with as a coach exactly. uh, that are your no go zones? I feel like it's not as it's this is really helpful information to tell the coach ahead of time and to be completely transparent. Otherwise, you feel like. I don't want to trick people or like, you know what I mean? I don't want to trick my coaches or like, I'm not going to tell them that, that if I feel this way, then I'm out. So I feel like that's useful to know. Uh, 